uh, how can a master's graduate gain experience when companies are looking for experience beyond two years? Um, will freelance online projects count? If so, how can I? Uh, how what? No, how can one do them? Okay. Also, does your course help address this aspect? Because the job search is proving to be very hard in engineering. Profiles get rejected due to a lack of relevant experience. Any suggestions will be a big help. Thanks. Yeah. Um, so the thing is, and I, I realize that, uh, and I know that people are, right now people are looking for engineers and they, they want finished data engineers. They want finished engineers. It's But it's hard to get them. Um, that's That's... Because like people were or in the past few few years, people were pushing the data scientists, data scientists, data scientists, data scientists, and now people realize, oh shit, uh, we need to actually have some data engineers or some engineers who build the platforms, who build the pipelines to automate everything and monitor everything, basically for the ops part, <laughs> and and like the the actual machine learning part is only a small part, ah. So I think, and th that's, uh, that's what, uh, what I experienced. It's a mixture of both. So you need a, you need a good, um, you need a, uh, how do you call this? Um, you need to have a basis. So it, it's, it's very beneficial if you already come from a computer science background if you have done a master's or a bachelor's degree, or if you have experience working in IT. You could be a database developer or something. That's that's really that that's already good. Like if you come and you start by with actual zero computer science skills, it's hard. It's hard. I completely understand that. And that's it's you maybe for junior roles or yeah, maybe for junior olds or maybe first doing an internship, which I uh, I personally don't like it. Um, if you're already like I have a master's degree, then do an internship. Eh. But it could be worthwhile. But let me quickly get to the question again so I don't forget something. Um, will freelance projects count? Yes. So one thing I always recommend for my students in the coaching is to find out which companies we and which uh, which um, industries you want to get into and look into what's currently available on the market so do a research on the and uh, job openings and job descriptions then start building a project by using data that is that is in line of of that that industry like when you think about banking it would be good to have some banking data that you work with uh, if you think about uh, uh, e-commerce, would be good to have some e-commerce transactions or e-commerce uh, um, payment stuff where people are, are are buying stuff and you create invoices and so on, or okay, where you also can do some analytics, and then you start building a platform on it and you do some um, you do some work with it. You think about okay, what what would a company may most likely need? They would need some uh, insight into their data. Uh, they maybe need a data warehouse, and so start by actually uh, start from that and by building a project and basically learning the engineering on the go. Because this way, when you when you uh, when you get when you get to someone who to an interview or when you when you send out your cv you can basically if you have documented that you can send people to your documentation and show off what you have done and show off your knowledge and that's a lot a lot better or uh, yeah it's a lot better than having a certificate just a certificate or a master's degree basically shows eh, the basics are done but like you could just learn for or train for the tests and be like not very good at it, but you have A's in the test. But if you have a project where you can actually show off that you have done something that's really, really helpful. And that's 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 where I aim with the coaching. That's also where I'm aiming with the academy. To create a project. Like if you think about you're getting some questions in, in the interview, you could 
uh, say okay or, or try to try to think about okay um, I've done this actually in my project that I have created in a way and then you could talk like steer the the talk actually to your project and explain like on 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 the real world use case what you have done otherwise uh, it's always like okay hypothetical hypothetical having a project also helps you that the that the interviewer can recognize the project and can think about some questions regarding that project and this way you you can steer a bit the 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 questioning and you can you can get a bit uh, an uh, easier start in interviews and you're also ahead of the competition in, in that case um yeah for instance what we have in the academy what i created like i'm not sure half a year ago an aws uh, quick start course where you can basically build a platform on AWS for e-commerce processing um, right away. So if you want to get into e-commerce, you can go there, st start that project that will cost you around 20, 30 bucks on AWS, depending on how long you run it. And, and then you're basically, then you're good. That that's Then you already have your project. You need to document that. Without documentation, you can forget it. You need the documentation. That's where, where we do, okay, I'm also doing like the, we're going to do like uh, smaller courses. Uh, we help people get into Python if they don't have uh, some knowledge there. So that's that's basically where we help building projects and, and helping you get into into yeah, certain industries and working on and, and, and jobs where they work with certain platforms. <clears throat> 